Mama Merkel, the communist, admitted grew up in a communist home, is a communist. Mama Merkel. Hungary calls in army soldiers given shock powers to use rubber bullets on migrants. Oh, really? When they use rubber bullets on citizens rioting, it's okay. But, oh, my gosh, hundreds of thousands of illegals running around robbing people. And, and so if you got to control them, you shoot them with rubber bullets. I'm not defending that. But the point is, this is what happens during a collapsed society. What were they running from? Why won't anyone show what happened in North Africa, what happened in Egypt, what happened in Syria, that our governments financed and funded and ran? Oh, my gosh, hungry so bad. Islamists in Germany trying to recruit young refugees, AFP. Kuwait and Israel admit they refuse to take refugees because migrants don't assimilate. Video shows refugees again fed like animals in pens. Now, I want to shift gears as it all ties together to 9-11 14 years later. And 9-11 14 years later, we have this new clip today. Former CIA deputy director calls for investigation into Obama administration's intelligence manipulation. This is a very, very serious charge. 50 intelligence analysts at CENTCOM... Well, let me just read the article, and we have the clips. Former deputy director of the CIA, we're going to play the Mike Morrell clip first, guys, has called for a full investigation of the allegations from over 50 intelligence analysts at CENTCOM that higher-ups altered their assessment reports on ISIS in order to fit with the Obama administration's public narrative the terror group is weak. So it could spread under Saudi command and take over, I would add. We told you this four years ago before it was called ISIS. We had all the experts on. We laid everything out. We told you they started attacking Europe. They'd use refugee flows, weapons. It's here. The charge was revealed by a Daily Beast article this week. and has been described as a revolt by spies from the military's intelligence apparatus. Yeah. <laughs> when push comes to shove, they're not going to be total traitors against this country. Remember four years ago when the troops said we're not going to be the Air Force for Al-Qaeda? They know you changed the name to ISIS. They know what those flags are. They know they've been given U.S. weapons and resupplied in Iraq. Let's go ahead and play this clip. Then we're going to play the other clip of Michael T. Flynn, the former head of defense intelligence, saying, yeah, they were ordered to put ISIS and al-Qaeda in command. He said, I just followed orders, but I'm on national TV telling you. That's who runs our government, boys and girls. They'll put people in power in Egypt till the Egyptian military kicked them out and in Syria and in Libya who chop the head off of every Christian they find except the young girls they rape hundreds at a time. But they rape them. Hundreds of men will rape one little eight-year-old girl. And you're not going to hear one fat word out of that punk mouth of Hillary Clinton who helped run the whole thing or Rachel Maddow or any of these women lecturing men that if we like to go hunting, we're male chauvinist or, you know, all this other crud. Just shut up, scum. You want to tell us how to live? You shut up, you filthy trash. Playing games with people's minds. Your reign of, of brainwashing's over, scum. You are scum. Anderson Cooper praising Al-Qaeda, praising ISIS, praising these groups in the Arab Spring. Calling them freedom fighters, you as they blow up every church they can find and crucify Christians upside down, you trash. And you criticize the Egyptian military when they take them out and took the country back. As our government set up our 30-plus year ally that brought stability to that country who wasn't perfect, but then you put in the most horrible, wicked, murdering scum you can, that's who runs our country. And I used to think they were only destabilizing enemies like Serbia, giving a third of their country to Albania and the radical Muslims. But now I realize they're going to give everything to the radical Muslims because the globalists like totalitarianism. They've lowered our political immune system to be so liberal we'll put up with anything. We'll say what we're told. We won't have any free speech. And then they'll bring in radical people who will bully all the rest of the Muslims into total tyranny and us along with them. Man, that's filthy. Man, that's evil. Man, that's out of control. How dare the Democrats call us racist for not supporting Obamacare that doubles and triples cost, written by the insurance companies. How dare you have bodyguards Michael Moore and try to keep poor people from defending themselves. How dare you try to start a race war in this country. How dare MSNBC try to get people to randomly kill police 
so then the police can be forged into a paramilitary force to oppress the inner city more. How dare you, you wicked trash, knowing full well what you're doing, consciously, premeditatedly. Let's go to this clip of the former deputy director of the CIA. I want to get your thoughts this morning about a story in the Daily Beast about 50 intelligence officials who have said that in some cases their reports have been altered uh, by senior officials in some cases to make it look like the fight against ISIS and Al-Qaeda is going better uh, than it might be. What's your reaction to that? So these are analysts at the U.S. Central Command, uh, CENTCOM, um, which is actually conducting our operations in Iraq and Syria. Um, one of the central tenets, one of the key aspects of the policymaking process in the United States is that analysts get to say what they think without any interference, without anybody changing it. So this is a very, very serious charge. I think it needs to be fully investigated. And if there is truth that somebody has been meddling with their analysis, I think, uh, um, I think somebody needs to lose their job over it. And there needs ah. to be full transparency oh, into this good. because this they've been falsifying all of it. They look when the military figured out we were openly arming Al Qaeda, they changed the name to ISIS. We told you all this. They didn't even change their name officially. They just told the West that, and then claimed Al Qaeda had fallen. This is a Saudi Arabian proxy army. Now, let's go back to the clip from three weeks ago that we've been airing with Michael T. Flynn, the former head of Defense Intelligence Agency. This is General Flynn breaking down, covering his own butt that, hey, we put al-Qaeda in charge. We knew they were doing it. I followed orders. And here's what's larger. They also launched chemical weapons attacks on Syria and then blamed it on them. And that even came out. The Iraqi government admitted it. Others admitted it. Because the jihadis aren't fully controlled. They want to be rock stars. They shot video of themselves launching the chemical attacks and running around screaming Allah Akbar. Obama goes, you launch chemicals, we'll invade. And then Al-Qaeda launches chemicals. I mean, it, it, it's so old. So let's go ahead and go to this clip. For the sake of our viewers, in 2012, your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the yeah. U.S. was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. Why did you not stop that if you're worried about the rise of, quote, unquote, yeah, Islamic I, I, extremism? I mean, I hate to say it's not my job, but that my job was to, was to ensure that the, that the accuracy of our intelligence that was being presented was, was as good as it could be. And I will tell you, it goes before 2012. I mean, when we, were, when we were in Iraq, and we still had decisions to be made before there was a decision to pull out of Iraq in 2011. I mean, it was very clear what we, what we were going to face. Well, I admire your frankness very on the subject. Very clear what we were going to let face. Me, let me just, to, one, before we move on, just to clarify once more, you are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it. But who wasn't listening? I think, the, I think the administration. Did the administration turn a blind eye to your analysis? I don't know if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. Yep. A willful decision to go support willful. an insurgency that had Salafists, Al-Qaeda, well, and Muslim Brotherhood. A willful Brotherhood. decision to do what they're doing, which, which you have to, really, you'd have to really ask the president, what is it that he actually is doing with the, with the uh, policy that is in place? Because it is very, very confusing. No, it's I'm not. Here today, right. Eddie, Let me break I, it down. I, yeah, you guys at the Pentagon are so close to this and you think you're not going to be sold out, you haven't got it yet. They are going to turn the Middle East over to radical Islam, merge with communism. That's the checkmate move by the New World Order and the central banks and Saudi Arabia. Do you understand that? Do you have that through your head, okay? And then if the states don't go along with it here in the United States, the globalists are going to bomb stuff and say the Patriots did it, or they're going to find reasons to indict people like the Texas Attorney General. I know they're trying to indict the governor right now, and I'm not going to get into any more of that. I mean, do you understand they got feds following the governor around all the time right now, trying to find him with a crooked toenail to throw him in jail? And by the way, the FBI doesn't like doing it. I mean, most people in the FBI are not really bad. They're compartmentalized, but it's so dirty now, they're just going, I cannot believe we're this evil. And I'm not going to get into my sources, folks, but I mean, I have sources. <laughs> I just, that's a problem, my job, man. 
is I know so much more than I can even say because I can't reveal sources. But the reason I know they're making their move is it's bad. It's bad. They're looking at a whole bunch of governors they're going to arrest. They're looking at taking out people in legislatures. Uh, government's even looking at sending hit teams around to kill key people that aren't going to go along with this. And all these generals that are now do telling the truth and stuff, you know they're going to send a hit team to kill you and your family, right? And they'll say you suicided your wife and kids. So I'm going to tell the generals and everybody else something right now. You're going to preside over the destruction of America and the world sliding into a new dark age, and you are going to end up getting locked in prison or killed probably because of your inaction and your, and, and, and your cowardice. I mean, I'm going to say it right now. It's not enough to say, you know, why are we turning the world over to Al-Qaeda and radical Islam? It doesn't make sense. It's not enough to say they're fixing intelligence. you got to go all the way or we're going to lose everything. Do, I mean, do you understand that? I hope you understand that. Because they're looking at taking out the state governments right now. They've got the military training to take out state governments right now. Why do you think the military is so freaked out and sending signals out going, uh, something's not right, uh, uh, we shouldn't be funding Al-Qaeda, false intelligence, this administration isn't too good, because they actually have come to the brass now and gotten them ready for this and had a huge purge of the top people and then put in a bunch of desk jockeys who've never been in combat in all the key positions and I, I, I don't know if the communists and the socialists and all these people realize, and, and even George Soros has never been in combat. He's taken out a bunch of countries. This is not going to be like taking down Iraq or taking down um, Ukraine or something. This is much more complex, and you, you, it's not going to happen. I mean, you're not going to get away with it. You may blow the country up in the process, but it's not a battle you win. I mean, do you understand that? This is mutually assured destruction. We know who you are, globalist. We know your game plan. The military now knows. The military listens to this show. We've already sent the analysis out, which anybody else can see what it is. We're just willing to say it openly. Other people are now parroting it. Do you realize it's game over unless you just want to blow the whole country up? I mean, do you think all the lemmings and all the trendies, just because you've got 45% of the public that can't wipe their own hind in, those people don't count in a game like this. Just because you've got a bunch of morons that will do whatever you tell them and, you, and are cult members and will speak like you say speak and do what you say, doesn't mean that with real people, you're going to have a victory. But now is the time for police, military, FBI, you name it. The country's been taken over. You are disloyal to yourself, to your family, to your own skin. I mean, it's getting so obvious now with how evil this new world order is that they plan to get rid of the old existing power structure, which wasn't perfect. But at least it wanted to boss hog and be a big, powerful, rich country. And new cut in taxes brought in more money to the government. So why not, you know, Boss Hogg, you know, Kennedy, why not cut taxes by 50% and more money will come in? And he did it and it happened. So they said, you know, I'm going to cut taxes more. And they said, no, you're not. Boom. We got an elite that wants us poor and stupid. I'll take Boss Hogg over that any day. So I'm not romanticizing the old power structure this isn't even the old power structure. This is just people in the system who aren't completely insane. You got to understand that it's a fetish. It's a power trip with the globalists to bring down America and bring down Europe. Because it's the source of their power. It's where they get their money, their innovation, their, their brains. But they're worried about it because the destruction of the elites, the centralized elites, has come out of Europe and the United States before. So they want American and European power, but they also despise it. And they want to sew up everything, bring down the world, and be the last men standing on top of the hill of skulls. And that dog isn't going to hunt. You're not going to get away with it. And because your battle plan has been laid out, the more you execute it, the more what we've said will be seen as prophecy. When it's not prophecy, I've got your playbook. I know what your hand signs are.
I know what your mindset is. I've been watching you, and I've got other people.